Hello everyone, my name is Kastoni. I'm a professional chess coach who has been teaching chess for a living for the last 11 years. And today I would like to reveal quite a few very big secrets of mine on how do I make my students into much better tactical players. We're able to achieve results that go from, for example, 800 rapid on chess.com to 1900 in less than a year. Of course, in combination, we have to work on openings, chess psychology and game strategy and other skills. But at your level, beginners to intermediate level, the tactical skills are probably the biggest component that will make the biggest difference in one's game. Today we're going to be focusing on pattern recognition, what it is, how to work on that, as well as the thinking process. How do we calculate and how do we know that there is a tactic there on the board when we have to think about all of those other things like central control, developing pieces, castling, etc, etc. So pattern recognition is simply placement of the pieces that allow the tactic to be possible. And usually before my students go into more complicated examples, I like to just teach them on the very basic patterns and how to recognize, say, queen and bishop attacks, queen and knight attacks, queen and rook attacks, before I give them sequences of moves that lead to those endings. So for instance, we could start with something like this. It's a very interesting exercise where you have to place queen and bishop for white over here on the board so that it would be checkmate. Let's pause the video and try figuring it out. Well, if it was difficult, then I have to say that this is one of the most common patterns in chess of how do we attack aggressively the opponent's king with queen and bishop and deliver the mate. So the correct solution will be placing the queen on f5 and placing the bishop on f8. And yes, this is very, very common, actually. Then we would move on to a position like this. And I would ask you to put queen and bishop here for white to checkmate the black's king and use six different squares for the queen. So, for example, you would say as my student that you want to put the queen on c7 and then the bishop has to be on c4 and that's checkmate. Or the queen has to be on c4 and then the bishop is on c7 and there will be a checkmate. Now, once you master different ways of how you could combine the queen and bishop, then we could move on to simple exercise like this one where we have to de deliver some kind of checkmate. For example, here, typical mistake would be to play queen h2 and instead black has to play bishop takes h2, king moves to h1. Now there is a discovered attack sign. We're going to talk about signs very soon. Bishop g3 check and followed by a checkmate. Now, once you learn that, we could make things even more complicated and we could move into a position like this, where here I would ask my student to calculate out the win for white after rook takes g7. And you will see that after forcing sequence of moves, for example, queen f6 over here, black can choose two moves. Let's choose more difficult for now, king g8. We actually have queen h6 and we're preparing the mating net and the pattern that was just seen before. However, here it's more difficult because it involved the rook sacrifice and there were more moves that you had to see and visualize. So for example, in the game, queen takes e5 could be played and white would be executing exactly the same pattern over here. So at first, you're learning something very simple. Just want to show you the way of how it works. And then we can complicate matters. So before you solve checkmates in three or four or five, I recommend finding a very good list of, say, checkmates in ones and twos. Usually popular checkmates have names attached to them, like, for example, smothered mate, Anastasia mate, and learning grinding those mates in ones and twos before you move up. You don't want to leave any weaknesses in the basics and the fundamentals of your game. I see too often players reaching 1800 levels and they're not aware of very basic patterns when they have to win material or checkmate. So my recommendation is finding a good book or source or hire me or another person as your chess teacher who could provide you with the right puzzles where popular patterns emerge, you grind them over and over again, and then you're complicating with level progression and moving into harder level exercises. Now let's talk a little bit about what raises our tactical awareness. This is very important for beginners. There are certain signs in positions that tell us, hey, you should look at the board because there might be a tactic right now. So one of very common signs or tells the position are unprotected pieces. Usually they're the signs of double attacks. Now, again, that doesn't mean that the double attack exists. 
but that means that you should be looking for one. So if I ask a student here, black to play and win, and his pattern recognition is not showing him queen a5, he should see those signs, hey, bishop is not protected, there's probably a double attack, and then he is creating the list of candidate moves. Too often I see beginner players looking if they could checkmate the opponent's king in this position or winning any other piece, which clearly is impossible because we are not even aiming there and they're all protected. And if we move to other double attacking exercises, you will see that it's happening quite a bit that at the end there is some unprotected piece somewhere on the board. For example, this is more complicated position where I, as more experienced chess player, would see, hey, the king of blacks is exposed, as well as there are two rooks and bishop not protected. So I would be thinking there must be a double attacking scenario somewhere, and white could play queen a4, followed by, for example, queen takes c6, and I win the rook. But I knew that it's probably going to be a double attack before I solved the puzzle. This is another example, and I have to say that those signs or tells not only can be occurring immediately in the position, but after some sequence of moves. So it's possible that there is nothing unprotected in the opponent's position, but you do some forcing moves, and then boom, there is a knight or bishop that is unprotected somewhere on the board. So here there is a knight not guarded, white could play bishop takes before, knight takes before, forcing move, and then you see that the knight is not protected, you start looking for a double attack, king is also exposed, and there is this fantastic queen b5. Now another sign that is very common and is very underrated is the sign of tactics that are called deflection, remove the guard, decoy. Usually the sign for that tactic are pieces that are attacked and guarded same amount of times. So in this position, for example, the black's queen is guarded once and is attacked once. And this tactic usually has everything to do with removing or deflecting the defender rather than putting more pressure on the attacking piece or attacked piece. So over here, white can play bishop takes f7, black is forced to take, and then we can win the queen. But the point is not that you see this through some kind of pattern recognition necessarily, because there will be much more difficult puzzles where your pattern recognition is not going to be helping you, but rather identifying the sign itself, this should raise your tactical awareness that I should be looking for a tactic right now rather than a strategic move. So let's take a look at another example. Once again, we could identify the target. Rook is guarded once, an attack once, and therefore we're looking for a deflection type of tactic. Let's look at another one. Over here, we could identify that the bishop is attacked once and guarded once. Therefore, we're looking for those deflection, remove the guard tactics, and we could remove the knight, and subsequently we take on e5 and wear a piece up. Now with something like, for example, discovered attacks usually is indirectly attacked piece. So that is also very dangerous. For example, even if my path recognition isn't kicking in, I'm waiting for my opponent to make a move and he's playing queen to c3, even if it's not path recognition, like which, which it is, of course, everybody would see knight f2 right away. But the point is that even if my path recognition didn't kick in, I would think, wow, that's weird. He's placing the queen that is indirectly attacked. And therefore, I'm looking for a tactic right now instead of just a strategic developing move, right? And knight f3 obviously does win the queen. Now, in some tactics, as I've mentioned before, the tactical sign will be appearing later down the line. So right now, you don't see any indirectly attack pieces, but if you play a move like queen g5, then you're setting up that sign, and now there's going to be a discovered attack. So when we experience chess players are solving puzzles that are rated at chess.com 3,000, 3,500, at the end, it's the same basic tactical pattern usually waiting for you. It's just that we have to see or make more forcing moves, two, three, four moves, to get to a position like this, and usually the lines are deeper, there are more moves to choose from, but at the end, it's as simple as those 500 rated puzzles where you just do a knight check and you can pick up the black's queen. Now, another very common uh, tactic and tactical sign are pieces that are on the same line. Usually they're bait for skewers and pins. And with pins, especially if there is a pin, we usually look for ways to take advantage of it. Or there is a, a saying that goes by like this, that if there is a pin, you should apply pressure on it, pin it to win it. So we know that if there is something pin, we see how many pieces of ours can come effectively and apply more pressure on it. So obviously here there is bishop h6 simply to win the rook. But there are more complicated examples as well where something like this is going to be happening perhaps on move 5, 10, 
or depending on your level, it could even be more. Maybe 10 would be maximum, I guess, right? And if there is something pinned, see if there is a way to take advantage of it. For example, here, the pawn cannot move sideways because the queen would be taken. And so very often in especially blitz games, uh, you can take advantage of such pins by taking free pieces as they cannot take back due to losing more material. So that is going to be the tactical sign phase, right? The unprotected pieces are the bait for the double attacks. Pieces on the same lines are usually skewers and pins. Same amount of uh, pieces that are same amount of times attacked as they're guarded are usually signs of deflection, remove the guard. Vulnerable king would be a sign of a checkmate or attack against the king. Pieces that barely can move would be a sign of a trapped piece. And if you have very dangerous pass pawns, it's about promotion. So reading those signs, you could make a list of what I just said, of course, and try to look for those things later. It's just going to be automatic. Is what raises our tactical awareness as chess players. And last but not least, I just want to cover thinking process elements as well, which is very important. And that usually involves identifying opponent's threat when you start solving a puzzle that will dictate how fast or slow you can be with your counterplay. If he's threatening, say, mate in one or two, then uh, it would be very hard to imagine a slow move play. But if he's not having any threat, then perhaps lifting a rook or creating a threat would be enough for you to, to be solving a puzzle. So to me, identifying opponent's threat is very, very informative. I like to know if I'm material behind or not. In the game, you know it automatically, usually because you follow it. And then you create a list of candidate moves before you immerse in a line. So the biggest mistake that people make at this point is that they would look at something like bishop c6, hoping to make bishop a5 work subsequently. But they would be spending like a minute or two on that. And that's just not effective. You should create a list first that there is bishop c6, rook c6, bishop g5, and for example, knight to d4. And this is the list that consists of checks, captures, threats. And then you choose a move that you like. Let it be bishop c6. You analyze it and refute it after a minute if you cannot make it work. Then move to the second one. Please, oh please, create a list of candidate moves before you merge in the line. And usually we like to evaluate the position only after the end of forcing moves. So to make a conclusion out of all of this, pattern recognition, I told you how to work on that. Then make sure that you're reading and know the signs that would suggest about the tactic being possible. That doesn't mean the tactic exists, but rather that you should be looking for one. And then the right thinking process, identify their threat, count the material, create a list of candidate moves, and then finally immerse in the line and analyze them one by one until you find the winning tactic. I hope this was useful. If it was, subscribe to my channel, consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.